Good afternoon and a very warm welcome to all of you. My name is Professor Heather Zwicker and I'm the Executive Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University of Queensland and I'm here representing as well our Vice Chancellor Professor Deborah Terry AO who wishes that she could have been her herself. I begin by acknowledging the Ngunnawal and Ngambri people as traditional owners and pay my respects to their custodianship of the lands on which we meet today. On behalf of all of us involved in this function, I wish to pay respects to their ancestors and their descendants who continue such important cultural and spiritual connections to country. We recognize their valuable contributions to Australian and global society. I would like to acknowledge the following people. The Honourable Ken Wyatt, Minister for Indigenous Affairs. The Honourable Margaret White, AO, and Professor Tom Kalma, who are patrons of the Churchill Trust. And David Trebek, Chair of the Churchill Trust. Adam Davey, CEO of the Churchill Trust. Parliamentary members and staff, senior departmental staff, industry representatives, and Churchill Fellows and staff, a very warm welcome to you all. It is more exciting to be in Canberra than I can say. <laughs> Until yesterday, it had been, I believe, 13 months and four days, but not that I was counting, since I'd been on a plane, and my heart thrilled to the tiny trays and that tone of apologetic imperiousness that you sometimes get on airplanes and the iffy card key at the, at the hotel, all of that. It's really, it's really wonderful uh, to be here. And uh, of course, I also want to acknowledge that people who are coming up from Melbourne will also be excited to, for instance, shake hands. <laughs> I am absolutely delighted to see this partnership between the University of Queensland and the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust come to fruition. This groundbreaking collaboration was the brainchild of Professor Karen Hussey, our former director of the Centre for Policy Futures at UQ, and now Deputy Director General of Queensland's Department of Environment and Science. As the story goes, she was driving home one night in 2019, enjoying a fascinating interview on Radio National's Law and Society Report. The interviewee was Jennifer, or Jenny, Bowles, a magistrate in the Children's Court of Victoria and a Churchill Fellow, and she's here with us today. Jenny had returned from her Churchill Fellowship in New Zealand, the United Kingdom and Sweden with concrete ideas about how Australia's family court system could be reformed to provide better rehabilitation outcomes for young people. It was a light bulb moment for Karen, and any of you in the room who know this will know immediately that meant it was a light bulb moment for all of us. The Winston Churchill Trust funds people to travel abroad and explore all sorts of ideas with the aim of bringing that knowledge and best practice back to Australia. What if? The Centre for Policy Futures, with its attention to turning research into policy, was able to partner with the Winston Churchill Trust in order to address pressing and contemporary policy issues. We are proud of our record at the University of Queensland uh, for knowledge exchange with governments and societies to help solve some of the biggest challenges we face at the moment. And again, when Karen wants to see something to completion, she does. So here we are. Without further ado, I would like to introduce the Honourable Minister for Indigenous Affairs, Ken Wyatt. Minister Wyatt created history in 2010 when he was elected as the first Indigenous member of the House of Representatives. In 2016, he became the first Indigenous minister to serve in a federal government after being appointed as the Minister for Aged Care and the Minister for Indigenous Health. Before entering politics, Minister Wyatt worked in community roles in the field of health and education, including serving as District Director for the Swan Educational Districts and the Director of Aboriginal Health in New South Wales and Western Australia. 
He brings this wealth of knowledge, as well as a lifetime of personal experience, to his current portfolio. It's my pleasure to welcome him here to address us. Can I thank you for that, Will? I want to start by acknowledging the Ngunnawal people and the on whose land we stand and honour their um, elders past and present. It's important. But I'd like to acknowledge the following people who are here today, the Honourable Margaret White, patron of the Churchill Trust, Professor Tom Kalmer, patron of the Churchill Trust. Everywhere I go, Tom, I see you. <laughs> uh, Mr David uh, Trebeck, chair of the Churchill Trust, Mr. Adam Davey, CEO of the Winston Churchill Memorial Trust. Professor Deborah, Deborah Terry, Vice Chancellor of the University of Queensland and the Chair of Universities Australia. And Professor Heather uh, Zika, the Executive Dean of the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at the University. Parliamentary colleagues, Churchill Fellows. And the Churchill Fellows, I want to thank you for the work that you've done. Often in society, there are moments in which there is a light bulb moment in thinking. And the research you've undertaken highlights the way in which you've had a concept within your mind but saw the value of exploring the opportunities. That if we were to apply this to a think tank approach, then what you've done is you've led a think tank of thinkers to take on board those areas that are passionate to you. And when I think about that in the context of Sir Winston Churchill, he resigned as the British Prime Minister in 1955 at the age, which was young, 80. He had served under five reigning monarchs, survived three world wars, had been a writer, historian, journalist, adventurer, and a painter on top of being a member of the British Parliament. He was also awarded a Nobel Prize for Literature in 1953. I was only one year old then. A great man indeed. So it's not surprising that in the wake of his passing, so many people across the Commonwealth were determined to honour his public service, inspiration, intellect and humour. Through this, the concept of travelling fellowships came about, a trust to raise local money to support everyday Australians with a life-changing opportunity, to travel overseas to conduct research in their chosen field and a platform to share findings with the Australian community. Any Australian with passion and a commitment to making a difference in Australian society can apply for a fellowship. With no bounds on the project topic, the diversity of findings is broad. What fascinated me that was when he passed away, our then Prime Minister, Sir Robert Menzies, led the creation of a Churchill Trust for Australia. The planning for the appeal to raise funds for the establishment of a Churchill Trust in Australia was run under the code name Operation G. And a lot of us wouldn't have thought about what the G was, but it was about gratitude. There had only ever been one national fundraising appeal in Australia at the time for the Hart Foundation. And so the volunteer collectors began one of the biggest and most significant public fundraising efforts in Australia's history. They exceeded the original target of one million, well and truly, and the national door-knocking campaign saw organisations, community groups, clubs and individuals rally to eventually raise £2.2 .2 million. If you index that effort, it still remains one of the largest public fundraising efforts in Australia's history. It is the only time in our history that the banks opened on a Sunday. The one day, or the day of the one day door knock, so that the money could be deposited. That was a great effort, and today I'm pleased to see that this has come to that, what has come of that effort. What we have here today, including in this room, is a group of remarkable individuals supported and funded by Australia's past and present as an investment in our country and in our people. For over 50 years, the Churchill Fellows have been contributing to the betterment of this country in so many areas and in so many ways. 
and from so many walks of life, covering so many topics, and I commend them for that. This includes the work that Scott Falkner is doing in advocating for the use of Indigenous traditional land management and jobs for Indigenous Australians, and Jessica Cox's important work in child safety, including the safety of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander children. I've always quoted uh, a man who I admired strongly, and I want to use his words again just today. Education has the power to change lives. Nelson Mandela once said that change is driven by the weapon of education, that the daughter of a minor can become a doctor, that the son of a peasant be can become the president of a great country. And that's why this fellowship is so important. Because when you take a concept or an idea and you apply for a fellowship and you have the opportunity to travel to other countries, what you see is that there is a a board of opportunities that is like an artist's palette, that in each location there are qualities and outstanding individuals that you engage with in order to acquire the knowledge for your chosen field. And when you bring that together, you bring back ideas for our nation that changes the concepts that we may be take as part of the status quo and accept as ordinary, everyday approaches. When I read some of the uh, extracts and reports in today's report, what fascinated me was the new ideas that, and there's two authors who I'll follow up with because they've presented me with some other lines of thinking that we should seriously engage around. And that is the one to do with children in out-of-home care or children who are taken into care. But what I loved was the proposition that we should invest in the parenting element, not in the residual. That if we intervene early, then the destiny of a child can be changed. That if we take the time to explore other avenues and other opportunities, it creates an incredible reform that sometimes is not contested in the mind of ideas that are important. And so if we think of everybody who has travelled away on a Churchill Fellowship, then that's an incredible encyclopaedia of key areas that are important to the social fabric and structure of our nation. Even the recognition of cultural burning and the way in which knowledge is transmitted, but is not transmitted just to Indigenous Australians, but to anybody who has a role in the management of the land and fire control. So I want to commend everybody, not only the, the trustees, but to all of those who have been participants, but equally to those who weren't recipients of a Churchill Fellowship, who thought about the possibility of accessing an avenue in order to enhance their own knowledge. When you consider Churchill's statesmanship, then what we're doing is creating the opportunity for Australians to take a position on a topic that is close to their heart, to explore it, to consider the avenues of so many ideas and then to come back and share that. That's what's important and that is the ongoing legacy of the fellowships because those fellowships not only inform the individual but they inform other Australians. So in keeping with your plan to start the Trust Operation G, I'd like to say, show my gratitude by saying younger or thank you in younger. And I look at the words there, learn globally, inspire locally. That's a powerful transition of shifting knowledge from one location or several locations to a point of intersection that makes a difference 
for everyday Australians who are challenged, but whose thinking also may show that they want a future that is based on a better outcome for the generations that follow them. In a sense, we're looking at our grandchildren when we do this work. And what we're doing is hoping to influence policy in a very constructive way that gives everyone a chance to think, to contribute, and to enjoy a better life. So if I look in this room, we've got so many Churchill fellows and trustees, it's really uh, like having the Churchill policy room and being part of a team of people whose passion and commitment wants to make a difference. So it's a great pleasure to be here uh, to say that I love what you do. I want to say that I am pleased to launch that whole concept of the Churchill Policy Room on a virtual basis because you transcend not only your community but you transcend our country and other countries because in your conversations with people, in your quest for knowledge, you would have also challenged their thinking and had them reflect on the questions that you asked. So congratulations to all and it's great to be here with you today. Thank you very much for those remarks, which were um, warm and far-seeing in equal, in equal measure. Thank you very much. I would now like to introduce the Honorable Margaret White, patron of the Churchill Trust and former Supreme Court of Queensland Justice, uh, the first woman to sit on the Supreme Court of Queensland, in fact. We also think of her at UQ as one of ours, since she was on our Senate for, I think, 17 years. Uh, and I know that Deborah Terry wishes that she could have been here personally to greet you. In August 2016, Margaret was appointed Joint Commissioner with Mick Gouda for the Royal Commission into the Protection and Detention of Children in the Northern Territory. And she'll address us now. May I respectfully associate myself with the acknowledgement of country and of the distinguished persons here this afternoon. We're most grateful to you, Minister Wyatt, for hosting this event, and that a number of honourable members or their staff have been able to come and hear from our Policy Futures Fellows. You will not be disappointed. Winston Churchill, that most quotable of men, sagely observed that the best argument against democracy is a five-minute conversation with the average voter. <laughs> and no doubt, you all chat with many voters. Well, there's nothing average about our fellows. As Churchill also said, my tastes are simple. I'm easily satisfied with the best. And the fellows are the best in their field. Most of the over 4,000 fellows from all walks of life have lived up to their promise of returning to Australia and making a difference. Some became or have become household names. Can I give you a quick snapshot of a very few? I can do no better than start with Cathy McGowan, a farmer in Victoria who was awarded her fellowship to study methods used by the Canadian government to communicate and consult with rural communities particularly with women. She travelled to Canada in 1990 and was inspired by the advances made there, recognising the contribution which country women made to the economy. Cathy, of course, was elected the independent member for the federal seat of Indi in 2013 and became an important voice in this parliament. She was also on the selection panel for our Policy Future Fellows. The ABC's Gardening Australia has three fellows amongst its presenters. Now, that may surprise you. The indefatigable Peter Cundall, in 1974, investigated, clearly to great effect, 
the use of TV to educate about the benefits of gardening. The master of all things citrus, Ian Tolley, was in the first cohort of travellers in 1966, and more recently, Leonie Norrington in 2020 from the top end. Dimity Dornan, a speech therapist, travelled to America to explore auditory verbal therapy for profoundly deaf children when cochlear implants were commencing. And so was born the idea of the Hear and Say Centres, now throughout Australia and the entire world, dramatically enhancing the lives of these children. Geraldine Doog is a journalist who has made an important contribution to the discussion of social, religious or cultural subjects. She travelled on her fellowship in 2000, but she is just one of a number of media-related fellows. Jill Margot of the Australian Financial Review has, I suspect, done more than even the medical profession to advance issues relating to men's health, particularly amongst businessmen. She received her fellowship in 2011. Richard Feidler, who keeps us entertained on long road trips whilst weeding the garden and pounding the pavements, was a 2003 fellow. Amongst the more earthly delights, I mentioned the renowned winemaker Cyril Henschke and 18 other vignerons. <laughs> There have been sufficient musicians to fill a large orchestra. Piers Lane, the pianist. Genevieve Lacey, the world famous recorder virtuoso. Harpist Marshall Maguire. And our youngest Churchill Fellow ever, at 14 years, the late brilliant pianist Geoffrey Tozer. It would be a grievous oversight not to mention Her Excellency the Honourable Linda Dessau, Governor of Victoria, who was awarded her fellowship in 1994 to examine efficiencies in court processes. Her proposed reforms have been adopted around the country. She also served on the board of the Trust. Nine fellowships in all were awarded in the 20 years from 1966 for participation in the Harvard University Trade Union Program in Boston. One of those early fellows became Premier of New South Wales, Barry Unsworth. Wherever I've been in our country, and whatever the activity, a Churchill Fellow is bound to bob up doing something to improve the life of our people. When I was engaged in the Royal Commission in the Northern Territory with Mick Gooder from 2016 to 17, I swelled with pride when we heard from a witness that his or her expertise was enhanced by being a Churchill Fellow. We even had one on a video link from Scotland who was a UK Churchill Fellow. Now, of course, two, as you've heard, are associated with this initiative. Magistrate Bowles, from whom you'll hear shortly, and Jared Sharp, a lawyer who was on the selection panel. We have chosen clowns, ceramicists, a doll maker, a saddle maker, cheese makers, a llama breeder, a horse farrier, every kind of allied health worker, medical doctors, and even lawyers. <laughs> and every year since 1966, there have been projects to enhance the lives of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people of this country by Indigenous and non-Indigenous fellows every year. And that was before 1967, of course, Tom. The breadth and depth of talent are staggering. They have been and are and will be agents for change and inspiration throughout our country, and I salute them all. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. I would now like to introduce and turn the podium over to Mr. David Trebek, Chair of the Churchill Trust Board, and himself, a Churchill Fellow from 1974, perhaps the llama breeder. <laughs> no, regrettably not the llama breeder. Thank you, Heather, and thank you, Minister, again, for your uh, involvement here in launching this uh, really quite exciting project. Uh, it is a pleasure for me to be 
uh, involved in the, in the launch of Policy Futures, not only as Chair of the Trust, but also someone whose whole professional career has focused on policy reform of one sort or another. Policy Futures is a milestone for the Trust. Over and above the subject matter uh, of, of individual chapters, it exemplifies, as we've been hearing, the quality and astonishing diversity of the Churchill family of now nearly 4,600 Australian Churchill Fellows. It does also illustrate one of our current priorities, to provide more assistance to Fellows for their career development once they've finished travelling. Assistance that can enable them to reach a broader audience, extend the coverage of their fellowship topic, and ultimately make a substantive contribution to policy debate. And finally, it's one way the Trust is adapting to the post-COVID environment via new initiatives, in this case, a cooperative venture with the University of Queensland, whose enthusiasm I commend. The Minister referred to the origins of the Trust, including the door-knocking uh, fundraising campaign in 1965, at which no fewer than 220,000 door knockers took part. Today, following careful management, sponsorships, bequests and other donations, we manage over $120 million, the income from which funds the fellowships and the trust administration. Each year since 1966, fellowships have been awarded to Australians from all walks of life, another expression you've already heard, to travel overseas on a project of their design. Average travel is between six and eight weeks and has involved almost every country on the globe. The focus of topics varies, broadly reflecting the issues of the day, without the trust needing to stipulate or restrict them. The selection process is competitive, with around 110 of being successful from roughly 10 times that number of applicants. The calibre of fellows, of which today's cohort of 11 is but a small sample, is uniformly impressive. As Margaret has just noted, they are contributing positively in almost every sphere of economic and community endeavour. Before introducing the individual fellows to you, I'd like to share a cameo involving a 2018 Northern Territory Fellow, Maida Stewart. Maida is an Aboriginal health practitioner whose topic was to research healthy housing designed to reduce the incidence of acute rheumatic fever, a preventable streptococcal disease unfortunately prevalent in parts of the Territory. One challenge the Trust has encountered is that some potentially worthy applicants, particularly from remote areas of Australia, have lacked confidence to travel on their own. In Maida's case, she, her son accompanied her to Auckland for the period of her travel. Previously, her son had suffered social anxiety to the point where he often struggled with simple socialising. This affected his self-esteem making it difficult for him to live a normal life. It was therefore a massive step to travel to Auckland, his first overseas travel experience. Once there, however, not only did he explore the Auckland region, he attended a number of meetings with his mother, interacting with the hosts and sharing stories. As a direct result of this experience, he has now gained sufficient confidence to enrol in an IT course at Charles Darwin University with the aim of becoming a cyber security specialist. In, in Maida's view, this story demonstrates how Churchill Fellowships are transformative and life-changing not only for the Fellows themselves but also for their loved ones. Let me now introduce the authors of Policy Futures. Firstly, from Victoria, uh, Jennifer Bowles. You've up to, now up the back. Stay there, Jennifer. I just uh, I need to take my glasses off to read, but I can't quite see you up the back now. <laughs> Jennifer is a 2018 Churchill Fellow who travelled to New Zealand, the UK, and Sweden to review options for residential therapeutic 
treatment for young people suffering substance abuse and mental illness. Second, Scott Falconer, uh, 2017 Melbourne Lord Mayor's Bushfire Appeal Churchill Fellowship, who travelled to the US and Canada to create close partnerships with and job, jobs for traditional owners of in fire and land management. And Scott was accompanied by Trent Nelson, uh, chairperson of the Jar Jar Wurrung Clans Aboriginal Corporation, who is also with us today. Claire Seppings, 2015 Churchill Fellow, who travelled to the UK, Ireland, Sweden and the US to study the role of ex-prisoners and offenders as peer mentors in reintegration models. Taryn Lane, 2016 Churchill Fellow, who travelled to Germany, Denmark, Austria, Sweden and the UK to learn from European regional towns tran transitioning to 100% renewable energy. From the ACT, Megan Gilmore, 2016 Churchill Fellow, who travelled to Finland, Sweden, the Netherlands, Belgium, UK and Canada to investigate school connection models for seriously sick children. Katrina Marzen, 2018 Peter Mitchell Churchill Fellow, who travelled to Germany, the Netherlands and the UK to research practical methods to prevent sexual violence through youth education. From New South Wales, Jessica Cox, 2016 Churchill Fellow, who travelled to the US, Canada, Norway and the UK to research innovative parent, family inclusion and partnership approaches in child welfare, and to whom the Minister has already referred. Natalia uh, Krizyak, uh, 2018 Churchill Fellow who travelled to Singapore, China, Japan, Canada and the UK to investigate best practice for designing child-friendly high-density neighbourhoods. From Tasmania, Steve Harrison, 2015 Park Family Churchill Fellowship who travelled to Norway and the UK to investigate school-to-work apprenticeship pathways in the aquaculture salmon industry. And from Queensland, Catherine Webber, 2018 Rodney Warmington Churchill Fellow who travelled to the Netherlands, Germany, UK, US and Canada to increase accessibility to public toilets by researching taboos, design, policy and legal barri barriers. And finally, to, from South Australia, Owen Churches who unfortunately, due to a, a bout of chicken pox, is unable to join us today. And Owen's uh, fellowship in 2018 saw him travel to the UK, Belgium and Austria to explore fairness and accountability in the use of government decision-making algorithms. Again, another topical uh, project, particularly in this building. Three of these fellows will now speak briefly and we've got to keep our eye on the clock because question time uh, looms. And I'd like to commence by inviting Jennifer Bowles to the stage.